Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's January 21st, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, Obama promises expensive goodies for the middle class. <laughs> Obama! Obama. Including free community college. <laughs> then, the first book written in Gitmo unveils the bare truth behind the notorious prison. I will close Guantanamo. I will restore habeas corpus. Guantanamo, that's easy. Close down Guantanamo. And Samsung responds to privacy concerns over TVs recording personal conversations. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Last night I had the privilege to watch the State of the Union address. I know many of you didn't. I heard it had the lowest ratings pretty much of Obama's career, and rightfully so. There's many other things that can distract you from what actually went on last night. All I saw was pretty much a performance of somebody reading off a teleprompter and a bunch of empty campaign promises, like he's gonna shut down Guantanamo Bay. How many times has he talked about that? And we'll talk about that in just one second. But first, let's go to this article from Kurt Nimmo. Obama's State of the Union, more stolen stuff. Insisting that the shadow of crisis has passed, despite non-government stats and analysis, casting serious doubts about that claim. Obama promised free community college, expanding tax credits up to $3,000 per child, and $300 billion over the next 10 years, and capital gains tax increases and other taxation schemes imposed on the wealthy, that is to say, the producers. Echoing the now popular income and quality meme pushed by collectivist Democrats, Obama's speech called for involuntary redistribution of wealth, in other words, wholesale theft. Now let's go back to this free college tuition. You guys recall Obamacare, first it was free health care, then it became affordable health care. And I'm wondering if the same thing is going to happen with this uh, community college because he's saying it's free, even though somebody has to pay for it. Somebody always has to pay for it. And who has to pay for it? The middle class. I guess you would call them the upper middle class. And this ensures that they will never join the higher class because it's another attack on middle class families. And they say, yeah, well, Ralph and Peter to pay Paul, get you into the college system, get you an associate's degree, which is pretty much worthless. I had an associate's degree in media production and nobody wanted to give me a job until eventually Alex did many years later. So it's just a worthless piece of paper. You know, you can go to school, you can become a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer. Degrees are good for things like that, but by and large, an associate's degree won't get you anything, and you can't get any of those previously mentioned jobs if you only have an associate's degree. But let's talk about another aspect of Obama's State of the Union address, Guantanamo Bay. First book written in Gitmo unveils bare truth behind notorious prison. A book written by one of the longest-held detainees of the U.S. Guantanamo Bay prison was finally released on Tuesday uncovering the abuse the prisoner underwent while in captivity, the book's editor told Sputnik. And it goes on to say that it was supposed to re be released years ago, but it had to be classified on to the year 2012 due to the nature of its contents. And we do see that in 2009, President Barack Obama issued an executive order to review the status of the individuals in prison in Guantanamo Bay. And yes, the detainees have gone down in number, but it is still open and operational. And if anybody would say, well, you can't trust the account of the person held in this facility to be honest, well, I don't think you can trust the account of the people operating the facilities to be honest, because we've seen the many bizarre things. They make these guys get naked and hug each other. They dress them up in weird outfits. They make them, you know, get into awkward positions with farm animals. All this stuff is public knowledge. You can go find the images for yourself. It's a very bizarre behavior, and this is what's going on. Not only this, the torch reports we've seen, the CIA torch reports, which people in the Senate didn't really seem to care about until they targeted them, being with the spying and all that. Then you have Feinstein and company coming out and say, we don't like all this stuff. We're like, no, you just didn't like being spied on. And I'm sure they didn't enjoy that process themselves. So just more things coming from the State of the Union address. I think the State of the Union is important just for the bare fact you can get the sound bites of Obama saying something. So then six months, a year later, when he decides to lie about something, he's like, no, you said it fact during the State of the Union address. And something he didn't really touch on, which I was somewhat surprised, was the firearm ownership in this country. Because we have seen President Barack Obama and his crew, uh, Feinstein that I previously mentioned, come after guns. And to anybody would say, well, you guys keep saying Obama wants to come after guns. He hasn't come after them. Okay, let me hip you to something. Uh, back when Dianne Feinstein was running her anti-gun campaign and continues to do so, but when she was hot and heavy, 
uh, previous years. President Obama said he would sit back and sign whatever legislation Dianne Feinstein was able to come across. So yeah, he wasn't actively out there, you know, every day rah-rah like she was, but he said, I'll sign whatever she comes up with. So in my book, that makes him just as guilty as what she was doing. But even though those two have kind of faded out from the spotlight, we do have new contenders. Arizona lawmaker makes moves to end private gun sales without a background check. And this is Representative Randall Freeze. And this is a trio of bills that call for expanded background checks on private gun transfers and limits on firearm use by youths under age 14, and also criminalize the private transfer of firearms by requiring all private transfers to be conducted through a FFL dealer and would restrict the use of any auto-loading firearm by a shooter under the age of 14 years old, which is to say that you can't transfer your firearm to your son or you can't give one to your dad. And also they say they don't want children to use firearms. And to anybody who says a child should never touch a firearm, look at this report from The Vault. As citizens in New York refuse to register their weapons with politicians who have armed bodyguards, new schemes to infringe upon Second Amendment rights are already in the works. The Justice Department is clamoring for American gun owners to have smart guns, smart guns that wouldn't operate without biometrics and or some type of proximity device, such as a watch. You may say, well, what's wrong with that? In Iowa, a father was forced to leave a gun range because the state said his daughters were too young to fire a handgun even with adult supervision. You may also be saying, guns and children don't mix. A child should never be allowed anywhere near a gun. A male enters, he has a gun in his hand, and he points it toward this young man. At that point, the young man fired his handgun at the suspect, and the suspect was hit. But it, it surprised me a little bit, you know, that he, he would do something like this, but I'm, in a way, I'm glad he did. I'm glad he's part of the training for this. When I was back there on the phone with 911, I heard the bathroom light turn on that was leading to the closet. And when I saw the door handle turn, I shot him. I guess it went through the door and went through him and went through the wall. A 15-year-old boy and his 12-year-old sister had been home alone in the Mount Royal Village subdivision. And at about 2.30, a pair of home invaders tried the front and back doors, then broke a back window. The brother grabbed his father's assault rifle and knew what to do with it. Two suspects showed up at Tomball Hospital. One, the adult, had multiple gunshot wounds and was flown to Memorial Hermann Hospital. But under laws such as those in Iowa, those children wouldn't have been able to defend themselves, especially if the weapons they used were their parents' registered smart guns. So as the establishment continues to put perfume on the pig known as gun control, remind them that the Second Amendment shall not be infringed. You can find more reports at Infowars.com. And those are just some of the examples of these things that you don't hear about. But something else that you probably didn't hear about, a knife attack in China. And this is why you need a firearm. China beheading, two dead in brutal knife attack in Yan'an shopping mall. And a person is believed to have been beheaded at a Chinese shopping mall in a knife attack that reportedly left two dead. Eyewitness photos published by a Hong Kong news outlet showed two dead bodies slumped on the floor in a pool of blood. Another showed a police officer picking up a severed head and placing it in what appeared to be a forensic bag. So yeah, they'll say like, US has higher gun violence, which yes, we do, but that doesn't mean that violent crime doesn't happen in other parts of the world. You have knife attacks, you have rapes, you have strong arm robberies. Many of these things go on in other parts of the world, and we don't really have those problems so much here in the United States of America. And more to that point, I have a graph here that shows the FBI crime statistics. And this is available on FBI.gov, and these are the violent crime offense figures. And they go from 2009 to 2013, and you can see from 2009 to 2013, we had a stark decline in violent offenses. So yes, we do have violent offenses here, uh, gun violence here, but we also have uh, many other things that we don't have. You know, they have more knife attacks in other parts of the world and things such as that. And also here in the United States, you're much more likely to be killed by a blunt object like a baseball bat, a hammer, or even a knife than you are to be killed by a fully automatic weapon, even though they keep trying to ban the fully automatic weapons. They kill very few people nationally here in this country. Those are usually the most sensational stories. Yes, I will agree with you, but those are used in very uh, small numbers of crimes. And here's another reason why you need a firearm. If somebody busts down your door carrying a machete, you can shoot them multiple times. Hey, you up. You up, boy. I got a gun. Calm down. Calm down. 
Now let's talk about things that are going on on campus. We have more officers carrying firearms, pepper spray, batons, things such as that on campus. And you know, I don't so much have an issue with it as long as they do it in a responsible manner. We've all seen the footage of what is it you see where the officer goes out there and pepper sprays the peaceful protesters. I definitely have a problem with that. Uh, here in Austin or right outside Austin in Bastrop, they tased a young man who was breaking up a fight. He fell down, busted his head. Now he has brain damage. I have an issue with that. But you know, just generally being prepared if a school shooter arrives, I don't have an issue with that. And now we have this article. More campus police officers are armed despite falling crime rates. Report of these sworn campus officers, 94% are authorized to use a sidearm, chemical, or pepper spray, while 93% are allowed to use baton, and 40% use a taser. And the stats go on from there. This is a report done in the years of 2011 and 2012 and fo focused on campus law enforcement. You know, I think it is good to have somebody on campus with the firearm because I gave you the report last week. I believe in Alabama, a elementary school was telling their students that, hey, if somebody breaks in, pull out your canned goods and throw the canned goods at them. And while I am happy that they're at least teaching the kids to fight back, I, I think a better course of action would be to arm the principal, arm a janitor, arm somebody who's mobile in the school and can deal with a threat, at least to the police, until the police arrive. Because when I was in school, our plan in the case of an active shooter was to hide and act like nobody was home, which to me I made no sense even at the time because the school shooter saw the school buses pull up to school. He sees the kids playing in the playgrounds. He knows that somebody's home. And you need some way to defend the children. So, you know, I think it is good to have them try to defend themselves but also have somebody armed on campus. And in other school news, new cyberbullying law will force Illinois students to give up social media passwords. It says students suspected of cyberbullying, suspected, could face criminal charges under new Illinois state law if they refuse to reveal their social media passwords to school administrators. According to the new rule, all forms of digital harassment, whether done on or off campus, will be investigated as a violation of school disciplinary rules and procedures. So which is to say, if you harass some kid, I mean, and people do stupid stuff all the time. It's not just on Facebook, if anybody who's ever played, you know, Xbox Live or PlayStation, whatever, you know, the kids, they just talk all the time about stupid stuff, racial slurs and all that kind of stuff. But now they're saying they want to investigate any of that activity, even if it has nothing to do with school. And we have previously seen schools sending laptops home with the kids and they're spying on the kids, all types of crazy shenanigans. They want to monitor your kids, every behavior, and now they're trying to lock you up. Even, I believe it was last year, maybe uh, it was 2012, where the young man posted something about Obama is just this young, goofy looking wannabe rapper guy posting up middle fingers, you know, F you Obama, blah, blah, blah. They came and arrested that guy. I mean, it's, it, I mean, it was a goofy thing for him to do, but it wasn't serious enough for him to be arrested. And he was facing serious charges. Maybe he still is. I need to go back and look up on that. And we'll end tonight with this talking more about the spy state. Samsung responds to privacy concerns over TVs recording personal conversations. Last November, we highlighted Samsung's global privacy policy, which advises users to please be aware that if your spoken words include personal or other sensitive information, that information will be among the data captured and transmitted to a third party through the use of your voice recognition. Which is to say pretty much any conversation that you have in your house, I would assume is private in nature. And Samsung is saying, well, since we're telling you that this is a backdoor in your technology, then we can go ahead and spy on you anytime we see fit. It's not just on here. I mean, uh, David Knight gave you the report earlier this week how the smart cars are going to start feeding your data back to uh, the authorities and other people like that. Your phones, your TVs, your laptops, your cars, I mean, all types of stuff. It's truly a surveillance state, and you have to watch what you say. But what they really need to do is stop spying on you. And now we have these big NSA data centers in uh, San Antonio and Utah all over the place sucking up your data. And anybody says, well, you know, what are they going to do with all this data? I don't know why they want to micromanage everybody's life. You know, everybody asks why, why, why. I don't know why. All I'm doing is telling you that it is happening. And they keep trying to tell you that the only people that they're spying on are domestic terror or maybe even international terror suspects, which, yes, that is true. But they're also spying on you, the ordinary citizen, and they have no right to do that. You do have a Fourth Amendment right in this country. Now, coming up after this break, we have more special reports, more things coming up on the InfoWars Nightly News. And we encourage you, if you're watching this on YouTube, to go to prisonplanet.tv and get signed up for the great video service there. Stay tuned after this break for more special reports.
Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is, it's hard. Even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food and our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser Oxy Powder, the Secret 12 Bioavailable Vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking yeah. tap water. Yeah, it has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. This is Rob Dew for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. Today's report focuses on the EPA, and specifically how the EPA wants to control aspects of your life. More specific than that, how they want to get rid of fires. That's right, the tool that we've been using for over 10,000 years to keep us warm, to cook our food, to heat our homes, they want to get rid of it. Even more specific than that, how they want to kill your grandmother. That's right. But before we get into those articles, I want to get into some climate change news. That's right. Some global warming's happening all over the United States right now, especially if you go outside, you can feel it everywhere. Winter blast delays schools, closes ski resorts, moves east. Coldest blast of Arctic air so far this winter is moving east across the country, delaying school openings, triggering frostbite concerns, and even forcing a Minnesota ski resort to close early over the weekend. Across most of the country, they're expecting temperatures to be 10 to 35 degrees below normal with wind chills of minus 25 and even up to minus 45 degrees in northern Ohio. 2014 Chicago has been the coldest in years. That's out of CBS Local. The last time the average annual year-to-date temperature was this cold was back in 1904. NOAA, winter 2013-14 among the coldest on record in Midwest. And these record cold temperatures aren't just limited to the United States. In the UK, winter 2014 set to be the coldest for century. Britain faces Arctic freeze in just weeks. And what do all these global warming record cold temperatures mean? Well, it means a lot of people are gonna die. It's not the cold, not global warming that we should be worried about. No one seems to be upset that in modern Britain, old people are freezing to death as hidden taxes make fuel more expensive. The government's chief scientific officer, Sir David King, later declared that climate change was more serious than the threat of terrorism in terms of the number of lives that can be lost. Since Sir David's exonerations, some 250,000 Brits have died from the cold and 10,000 from the heat. So there you have it. Since 2003, hundreds of thousands of people, mostly elderly, have died in Britain due to the cold than from the heat. We are the independent. Bitter conditions linked to deaths of additional 31,000 people last winter, a rise of almost one-third. Pensioners were worse affected by the 31,000 additional deaths. 
which were calculated by comparing the death rates among non-winter months to those that occur between December and March, the ONS report states. Elderly person dies every seven minutes due to fuel poverty scandal. And this UK Express article talks about how nearly 3.5 million people will not be able to pay their heating bill this winter. Back to the US. Killer cold, winter is deadlier than summer in US. Winter cold kills twice as many Americans as does summer heat. About 2,000 US residents die each year from weather-related causes of death. One interesting finding was the high number of deaths in the rural west due to the cold. New York Times, even before long winter begins, energy bills send shivers in England. And talks about a guy named John York who in October paid about $375 for his heating bill. In November, his bill jumped to 788, a staggering increase of 110%. OzarkFirst.com reports heating bills on the rise for many as temperatures drop. So what do those articles show? One, that the northern hemisphere is getting cooler, not warmer, as many have predicted, especially all those climate change Nazis out there. And two, this is really affects old people. So now I'm going to show you how the EPA is trying to kill your grandmother. What do most people use in the west and in the north? They use wood burning stoves. Wood's a great source of heat. It's abundant, it's everywhere, people can get it themselves and they don't have to rely on an infrastructure to deliver it to them. Plus, they don't get those utility bills related that other people get. They're not getting the gas, they're not getting the electrical increases, they're just burning wood that can be found anywhere. Well, that is of course unless you live in Oregon. Air regulators ban visible chimney smoke from wood stoves in Eugene area. Wood stove owners in the Eugene Springfield area have been pouring on the fuel during the cold snap, and air quality regulators say a buildup in pollution means that the burning has to be curbed. The Eugene Register Guard reports that such bans may become more frequent because federal standards on particulate pollution have been tightened. Agency bans wood burning stove in three cities. Tighter particulate pollution standards set by the federal government in 2006 have required communities nationwide to clamp down on wood stove burning and other sources of smoke carrying small particulate matter. And this brochure is put out by El Rapa, the Lane County Regional Air Protection Agency. It says, burning wood can be an economical way to heat your home. However, burning wood improperly wastes fuel and causes harmful air pollution. And it shows some pictures of what is proper smoke and what is not proper smoke. And it talks about the, the terror threat levels they have for smoke pollution, green, yellow, red one, and red two, and what they mean to you. And they can actually fine you between $50 and $500 for each infraction of visible smoke coming out of your chimney when they put out these burn bans. Citations issued for violating wood stove ban. Eugene, Oregon. For the first time in five years, the Lane Regional Air Protection Agency will issue citations to some Eugene residents for violating a burn ban. El Rapa receives call from neighbors during the burn ban who said they saw those living around them in violation of the burn ban. The agency then goes out and inspects the report for themselves. So they've got their tattletale squad set up, they have a hotline you can call, and then they send out an agent to actually look at the smoke coming from your chimney to see if it violates, according to this chart, one of their burn ban violation rules. And this doesn't just happen in Oregon, it's happening all over the country, and it's due to the EPA. Here's some more areas where it's happening. Fireplace use banned in several California counties. Air district officials have issued a ban on fireplaces in seven California counties. No smoking, New York City bans fireplace construction. On July 1st, no wood-burning fireplaces can be built in New York City residences, and a measure announced by Mayor Bill de Blasio on Earth Day. And this burn ban would even cover the mayor's residence where the original Yule Tide log was filmed, although we know government officials never have to abide by the rules that they set upon the rest of us. Now let's go to Washington State. Wood stove and fireplace restrictions announced due to air quality concerns. Indoor burn ban effective immediately. Strict standards were implemented in 1988 by the United States EPA and were further enforced by the state of Washington in 1995. So we're seeing a record here of Western states, very liberal-minded states, are taking these environmental regulations set up by the EPA and then creating bodies and boards and agencies and inspectors to go out there and look at people's chimneys, look and see what they're burning and impose fines on them. But why are they going after wood? What is the big deal? Well, I'm about to tell you, here it is. From Forbes, EPA's wood burning stove ban has chilling consequences for many rural people. It seems that wood isn't green or renewable enough anymore. The EPA has recently banned the production and sale of 80% of America's current wood-burning stoves, the oldest heating method known to mankind and a mainstay for rural homes in many of our nation's poorest residents. That's right, it's going after the rural, 
poor and old people, because a lot of people that are older live in the rural communities. According to the U.S. Census Bureau's 2011 survey, 2.4 million household units burn wood as their primary heating source. That's right, these left people really want to go after stuff that they claim isn't green. Even the burning trees, it's a renewable resource, that's not a green form of technology that they want. They want this really expensive technology. They want people to go out and buy new wood stoves, upgrade their stoves, get rid of the old ones, make them inoperable. And all this is a way to control what humans use and how they use it because they just can't stand free individuals. So that's what they have to do. They have to attack them. EPA bans most wood-burning stoves in a corrupt scheme. Fireplaces next. They haven't gone after outdoor appliances or home heating appliances, but they can't be far behind. Will people be able to heat their homes in the future controlled by extreme environmentalists? The ruling will require efficiency and carbon monoxide testing and reporting, which will provide consumers additional information to help them select the best wood heater for their homes, which will cost sellers and homeowners time and money as they face an unbending bureaucracy overseeing these simple devices. Yeah. Heating your home used to be as simple as starting a fire with some paper and some kindling and some wood. Now you have to bend over backwards to these regulations. You have to look at the soot and smoke that's coming out of your smokestack. And if you don't, your neighbor might turn you in and then you're gonna get fined by these agencies out there. It's just another form of hidden tax and it's meant to drive people off their land and I'll get into that. But let's look at the EPA and what they do. Let's look at some of their activities and see if those are sustainable or proper or even civil. EPA tested deadly pollutants on humans to push Obama administration's agenda. And this is from the Daily Caller. The Environmental Protection Agency has been conducting dangerous experiments on humans over the past few years in order to justify onerous clean air regulations. Basically what they were doing was setting up a room, starting up a truck outside, running a pipe from the tailpipe into this enclosed area and actually sticking a hose in people's mouths and made them breathe exhaust to check and see if it was dangerous. I can tell you without the experiment that it's dangerous to do that to people. But the EPA did it, but it must be okay because they're doing it for a greener planet. Here's more. Uh, Don Salazar, EPA sued over illegal experimentation on human subjects. The EPA and its administrator, Lisa Jackson, in her official capacity are targeted in the lawsuit for knowingly conducting experiments on humans that involved exposing those persons to toxic substances that the agency believes will cause death. But it's not even the elderly and infirm that they were testing these diesel fumes on. They were also testing them on 10-year-old children. But this is all allowed. Back in 2005, the San Francisco Gate reported that the EPA has loopholes that allow them to test on children that have been abused and neglected. These are our most vulnerable citizens that the EPA is conducting illegal experiments on. And what are all these EPA regulations supposed to do? Well, they're supposed to get people out of the rural areas where you could have uh, wood-burning stoves and alternative heating sources that aren't from the main utility companies and pushing people into the cities. Here it is from the Atlantic. More Americans moving to cities reversing the suburban exodus. 2013 saw 2.3 million more people living in metro areas than 2012. The trend in city living is driven primarily by two groups, young professionals and baby boomers who are retiring and moving back to the cities they left when they started families. So there they are, they're pushing the old people out and if they don't kill them first with all these regulations and high heating bills, well, they're going to herd them into these compact cities where then they can maintain total control over them and have control over everything in their house, all the heating, all the appliances. It's all part of this new wave of control that the government's slowly ratcheting up, slowly inching up to take over your life. Have you got your calorie card open on your smartphone? I registered your visit with Slick Travel Corp the other day, so they've uh, allotted you a journey time to, to match mine. <laughs> It makes so much sense, doesn't it? Switch off brain and go to work. <laughs> With this many people around, I'm glad there's a mega computer in charge. UN-backed scientists call for mega city population lockup. This is put out by Planet Under Pressure. It has statements here from some of the scientists. Check this out. We certainly don't want people strolling about the countryside. We want to save the land for nature by living closely together. Insisting the world population be locked up within the compounds of megacities, the er elites realize that if the herd is to be properly controlled, walls are needed, thick walls. And by constructing these walls and making the masses go inside of them, it will be easier to control. Chief scientist Mikhail Fragius, involved with Planet Under Pressure, told MSNBC, the answer to population growth is denser cities. Now let's look at this 2012 Planet Under Pressure press release. A fast-growing number of high-tech, artificially intelligent, internet-connected cars, appliances, cameras, roadways, and pipelines, and more. That's what they want to push everybody towards, this total control infrastructure. And how will they improve efficiency? 
Ah, using utility meters and sensors that monitor the capacity of power generation network and continually gather data and supply on demand of electricity. Those are your smart meters. Integrated travel information services and toll road pricing based on traffic, weather, and other data. Those are the black boxes in the cars and the TSA uh, controlling who travels where. Data gathering and feedback from citizens using mobile phones. That's the NSA spying they're doing on you. So all this is under this planet under pressure plan back in 2012. And where does all this come from? All this EPA regulations that have recently come about. Well, it all comes from the UN. Wood fires fuel climate change UN. This is out of the Guardian. The United Nations report has just uncovered wood burning and diesel vehicles as two of the biggest culprits in the developing world of generating black carbon soot that is a major cause of climate change. It's nice to sit in front of a wood fire in the winter, but we should all be feeling pretty guilty, says Joseph Alcameo, chief scientist at the UN Environment Program. Here's the telegraph. Wood burning stoves cause global warming. 300,000 tons of black carbon emissions in Europe and New York comes from wood burning. Wood burning stoves are gaining popularity in both the US and Europe as homes go back to rustic fashion and the price of heating rises and households are encouraged to adopt a green technology. But it's gotta be the right kind of green technology, not the kind that doesn't put you under environmental regulation. Now, how do the EPA and UN, uh, UN mix together? Well, here they are right here on the EPA's own website under their climate change section, International Climate Partnerships. Below is a list of main international climate change initiatives the EPA supports. And it lists the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change as one of their international conventions. It also lists Energy Star as one of the programs it supports. And that's the program where they take uh, all the appliances out there, basically make them work with less electricity using less water, but they don't also work as well as they used to. That's all part of the new global love that they're gonna be pushing on you. EPA's role in United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP. UNEP assesses global, regional, and national environmental conditions and trends, develops international agreements and national environmental instruments, strengthens institutions for wise environmental management, integrates economic development and environmental protection, facilitates the transfer of knowledge and technology for sustainable development, and encourages new partnerships and mindsets within civil and the private sector. And then you can read the UNEP agreement on this page that was signed by an EPA Administrator Jackson. So the EPA is signing up with the UN to basically control you, get rid of wood burning stoves because those are bad and push people into compact cities. That's gonna kill your grandmother and kill wood burning as we know it. And you gotta ask yourselves, we've been burning wood for thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. Do we really need to get rid of this act? Is this something that it's time to get rid of that we shouldn't have wood burning anymore? Is it really that big of a problem or is there something else? Is there a bigger agenda afoot? Agenda 21 is the action plan to destroy your sovereignty and that is your personal sovereignty and your national sovereignty. This is the green mask, the environmental mask. Because if you are terrified that you're killing the planet, you will be willing to accept any restriction. That's right, it's Agenda 21. And this doesn't just pertain to the United States. This is going everywhere. Here it is in Business Insider. Cool Yule as Paris bans fire logs. 435 towns and cities will be banned from using open fireplaces. So they're banning fires. Greek government to ban operation of fireplaces and wood burning stoves and fine wrongdoers. It's like the evildoers. There's an army of counselors, advisors, experts, and specialists sitting in their fuzzy warm offices in several Greek ministries. This army of well-paid spoiled slackers spend the winter months at work because taxpayers come up with their heating needs. This money is also paid to those taxpayers who freeze in their own icy cold homes because they can not afford the exorbitant prices of heating oil, natural gas, and electricity needed for AC. Can you imagine the fireplace police or will they be called the wood police as they enter your home and fine you 100 euros and even detain you for heating your home. EU and bid to freeze out patio heaters, and that's from The Guardian. And they say when this ban comes into effect and is enforced, it will cost pubs and eateries in the UK up to 250 million pounds of lost revenue per year. That's the name of the game in Europe and the US everywhere. The UN's pushing it, and now the United States has gone into it with the EPA, and that's to ban this type of activity. They wanna ban basic human activity that's been around for 10,000 years. But why is that? It's because of carbon, they say. It's, it's, it's heating up the earth, it's cooling the earth, it's changing the earth, whatever. And that this carbon dioxide, it's not even carbon, it's carbon dioxide, but they call it carbon because they don't want you to really think about what it is because you know in grade school you were taught, right? Photosynthesis, 
plants breathe carbon dioxide, put out oxygen? Yeah, well, it, now it's been proven. <laughs> Daily Mail, carbon dioxide emissions help tropical rainforests grow faster. Studies show trees absorb more greenhouse gas than expected. NASA study shows tropical rainforests absorb 1.5 billion tons of CO2 a year. Rainforests absorb more than half the CO2 taken up by vegetation globally. Tropical forests are growing faster than scientists thought due to the rising levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So you see, as carbon dioxide increases, plants grow faster, taking in that carbon dioxide and putting out more oxygen. That's how it works. It's a self-regulating mechanism. But not if you talk to a UN global, global cli climate change person. They just are like, carbon, carbon, carbon. We got to get rid of the carbon. Got to get rid of the carbon. NASA, how tropical rainforests may end the climate change issue. But what about all that polar sea ice that they're telling you about? It's, it's melting. It's melting away. Well, number of ships transitioning Arctic waters falls in 2004. This is out of ABC News. Mike Humphrey, executive director of the Arctic Institute, a Washington-based think tank, says, I think 2014 shows that development and Arctic shipping may be further off than we might have thought a few years ago. The ice is not melting as quickly as previously predicted. Arctic sea ice a whole lot more stable than scientist Al Gore predicted. Despite dire predictions that the North Pole would be ice-free in the near future, Arctic ice levels have been more stable than scientists predicted. So what does all this mean? These global governments are getting together with local regions. They're not even cities or states or counties. It's these regional areas, and they're maintaining control over basic human activity. And once they ban fire, and once they kill off your grandmother and take her land, what are they coming after next? They're coming after the wheel. And that wheel is those drivers out there in their cars. They're going to force you into driverless cars, into compact cities, and control everything you do all in the name of saving the planet. Remember this next time you start a fire. In fact, maybe you should start a fire right now just to protest the UN and the EPA and all these global climate change fanatics. This has been Rob Dew for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. If you're watching this on YouTube, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Right now we're having an amazing special. For under $30, you can get a full year membership and you can share your username and password with up to 20 people. It's an amazing deal and it's a great way to spread the word. Thank you for watching. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12. Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. All your life you've been fed the big pharma lie that you can't personally do anything to protect against sickness and disease. And if you come down with cancer, then it's your fault and it's genetic bad luck. Or if you get the common cold or pneumonia and even someone dies from pneumonia, that it's their bad luck and there's nothing you could possibly do about it. 
We know that's false, and we know it comes down to the immune system, and it comes down to gut health, and the microbiome, and the probiotics, and the liver health, and so on and so forth that we're not going to get into tonight. Ultimately, though, there is a line of defense that we're all aware of. I mean, something is fighting the sickness, and some, there's a reason that certain people die from the flu and certain people do not. And it comes down to their ability to produce a certain type of lectin. Specifically, the research is now clear that there's an astounding new discovery that actually dates back quite some time, but is now becoming mainstream and making sense. It has to do with something called a mannose binding lectin. Now, specifically, we can even go to the National Library of Medicine, which I've been researching for days now on this, where we find, just looking into the research on their website specifically, we can read that a mannose binding lectin deficiency is actually the result of many diseases, specifically, even on the genetics home reference of the U.S. National Library of Medicine, they state that a mannose binding lectin deficiency is a condition that they state that a mannose binding lectin deficiency is a condition that affects the immune system. People with this condition have low levels of an immune system protein called mannose binding lectin in their blood. These individuals are prone to recurrent infections, including infections of the upper respiratory tract and other body systems. Now, what does that mean? It means that if your body can't produce these mannose binding lectins, you're going to get sick, right? And a lot of people are deficient in these mannose binding lectins. But how do you produce them and what are they? Okay, so you have a gene that is actually responsible for expressing the creation of these lectins. But they've found now studying people, and a lot of this research is old and it's not being funded because Big Pharma loves it. They found that a lot of people aren't producing these mannose binding lectins for one reason or another. And they say it's a mystery. We have no idea why people aren't able to fight off the common cold or the flu, while some are. Gee, also some people that live in indigenous areas and eat fruit and apples and live to 120 years old are not getting sick. What's going on? Obviously, and they admit there's environmental factors turning off your genetic ability, so I do agree it's genetics in some degree, your genetic ability to fight off disease with these mannose binding lectins. So what is it? Environmental. It means that either something in the air the water or the food is affecting your ability to create your immune system. So think about it as a light switch. There's a light switch on the wall in this room, and if I turn it off, all of the lights go off. But there could actually be a little side deal where you turn it on slightly and the lights begin to increase. That's exactly what your immune system is like. And if you're on full power, you're not going to get sick. It's going to crush everything, and I'll actually show you specific documentation for this. In fact, we'll look at one of the harshest viruses, the most weaponized, Ebola. We can go to Harvard Medical School in conjunction with U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases, which is out of Fort Detrick, Maryland, and look at this key study. High-dose mannose-binding lectin therapy for Ebola virus infection. And what they found, reading the news reports on this, is that a healthy body can produce mannose binding lectins and actually destroy the cell wall of the Ebola virus. From there, it can destroy the virus and the individual does not die or get fully sick from the virus itself and they defend it. Their immune system, the light switch is fully on, they're producing the mannose binding lectins and they're destroying the virus. Now specifically in rats, there's other studies as well, similar to this, and they also did it in this one, they give the rats uh, secretion amounts of mannose binding lectins. And they found that the rats that have higher amounts and higher levels were actually not only immune to Ebola virus, but if they were actually to get it inside of their body, they would quickly destroy the cell wall and, de and defeat the virus completely. And even the rats that were previously susceptible to it, with enough mannose binding lectins, they were perfectly fine. So what this means is it's applicable to human science. It means two things. Number one, the immune system of humanity can actually be measured by these mannose binding lectins. And number two, there's no real research being funded besides the army and uh, deep underground research in these labs where they're actually trying to figure out how to stop diseases, which they already know about in many ways. But big pharma and FDA and CDC don't wanna tell you about mannose binding lectins. Gee, I wonder why that is because mannose binding lectins come from activating your immune system naturally. It's the most essential thing that I believe now that based on the research that you can do. And it's essential to turn that switch on with the simplest of ways. Obviously, avoiding GMOs, avoiding garbage in the food supply, avoiding tap water are all key ways. But I wanna highlight a few different ingredients that I've found to be the most powerful and effective based on the PubMed National Library of Medicine 
Congress reviewed studies that highlight these essential properties of these ingredients. Let's start with extremely simple items like elderberry extract. And it brings me to this study, another one from PubMed, entitled Randomized Study of the Efficacy and Safety of Oral Elderberry Extract in the Treatment of Influenza A and B Virus Infections. And they actually conclude, at first they were saying, well, you know, it's been used in folk medicine for centuries and used to treat colds and sinus infections and have antiviral activity against the flu. But they actually conclude in their research, this is on PubMed, this is the journal, uh, the open source uh, journal operation in which all the major schools actually worship and listen to. They conclude, elderberry extract seems to offer an efficient, safe, and cost-effective treatment for influenza, the flu. These findings need to be confirmed in a larger study. And I completely, completely agree. They do need to be confirmed in a larger study. Unfortunately, we're not going to see that because there's no money to be made in elderberry. There's no money to be made in ginger. There's no money to be made in actually helping people get iodine for Big Pharma, who makes billions upon billions of dollars selling things like Tamiflu, which they just increased the expiration date for, and we know it's toxic. The government subsidized it. Uh, the UK and the United States spent billions of dollars giving the drug companies more money so they can pump Tamiflu, which does not help the flu. Let's continue on to these studies. Here we can see, just I pulled, I went online, I pulled just about four pages from PubMed, and these are the amount of studies that I found just on elderberry. Elderberry significantly reduces the duration of infection from influenza in a safe manner. Keywords, safe manner. Elderberry stimulates cytokine production in the healthy immune system to fight off viral infection. It even protects against HIV. Okay, so not only are we talking about building up the immune system with these mannose-binding lectins to shut down Ebola, elderberry itself, the herbal extract, elderberry, fights against HIV and can turn it off according to these studies. Again, online in PubMed, National Library of Medicine. Elderberry flavonoids bind to and prevent H1N1 infection as well in vitro. Sulfate and olive leaf have been found to block HIV replication. Elderberry green tea and cinnamon extracts rich in certain flavonoid compounds were shown to block HIV-1 entry and infection. These are organic compounds that can be found throughout the world, in the ground, eat them, put them in your mouth. It's as simple as that. That's why Big Pharma does not like it. And, you know, it occurred to me driving in the car actually to the studio today that I'm upset. I'm upset because Big Pharma can go and say you need flu shots and you need Tamiflu and you need Prozac, which they knew actually caused suicide. And a Harvard researcher came out and said that people were being treated like guinea pigs. They're making billions upon billions. Sure, they have to pay a few million dollars in fines, but that means nothing to them. Bottom line, their profit, pff, out of this world. And I'm upset because I'm showing you research and I'm helping explore all of this in these cheap, cheap, cheap options, virtually free options to help prevent these issues. And you know, it makes me just wanna push the organic natural products that we've created even harder. And now make up your own decisions with these products. We went out, we looked at all of the research. We decided for ourselves that we're going to offer two things. Number one, we're going to offer alternatives. That's why we created InfoWars Life and created Right Side, because Right Side, in my, in my mind, there are two sides you can join right now. You can join the establishment, you can go out, and you can get all the recommended shots, and you can get all the recommended pharmaceutical drugs, or you can join, in my mind, the Right Side and take your health, your intellectual abilities into your own hands and decide what you're going to do with your own health, or you can go ahead and listen to Obama. In my mind, I'm passionate about natural organic substances. I'm passionate about reading studies that receive like $5,000 to find that certain compounds block HIV when we could fund them with the money that Big Pharma is getting through the government buying Tamiflu for billions of dollars. Can you imagine what we did? What would happen if we spent billions of dollars to research elderberry extracts? That's why I'm proud. I am proud to push InfoWars Life at InfoWarsLife.com and I'm proud to push the new right side line of ancient defense because I'm proud of all the ingredients that we source that are ultra clean, ultra pure, that are free of GMOs throughout the InfoWars Life product line. And I'm proud of every single ingredient that's put on there through the formulators like Dr. Group, who knows what he's doing, 25 years of formulating, can go in and tear up any ingredient list on any product. But here's ours, certified, approved, Dr. Group standard and beyond. And I'm proud of that. And I encourage everyone to look up all this information for themselves because we can't actually tell you many of the things that these products do.
We cannot, under FDA law, tell you many of these things that we've seen and I believe the products do. You can look at the reviews online at InfoWarsLife.com. You can watch the people's videos um, on YouTube telling you all the things that uh, X2 Nation Iodine has done. And you can also trust that this is a quality brand we put our name behind. Ancient Defense was created with all of this research, with this understanding, with key formulators, and I encourage you to check out InfoWarsLife.com and check out Ancient Defense from the new right side line. You can join the establishment or you can take your health and your intellectual decisions into your own hands. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and I encourage you to take everything into your own hands and not join with the demons. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. Yeah, it has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.